Welcome dear students. In this session, I would talk about changes in the vowel sounds during Middle English period. I hope and expect that by the end of the session, you would understand the changes that took place in the pronunciation during the Middle English period with particular reference to the vowel sounds, how they were formed, how they were modified and how they were placed. Well, my dear students, when we compare Old English and Early Middle English, what we notice is that there is a feature that is shared and that is of the lengthening of vowel sound. In fact, lengthening of vowel sound happened during the later period towards the end of the Old English. However, it did not become apparent. It became apparent only when the Early Middle English period started. In many cases, the walls were shortened again during the Middle English period, but long walls remained in some dialects, especially before certain combinations of consonants. For example, if you look at the screen, you would notice L and D that makes ld sound. For example, held, bold, in all this ld sound. MB that is m sound, for example, comb, m and ND sound, for example, end, end. So, before these sounds, the walls were lengthened in certain situations. Lengthening before these groups accounts for the most modern forms of words such as old, bold, cold, told, etc. Well, my dear students, in Old English, these had short wall sounds, for example, ald. This was lengthened to a during the 9th century. It became ald. And in the 12th century, this regularly became o as it is produced in o, old, as we produce it now. And this became a regular feature. Other examples of the lengthening before these three groups are provided by the words here. You can look at the screen. All are given here in modern English in this blue color. Field, child, comb, climb, blind, and ground. Please compare these with the old English pronunciations of these wall sounds. You know, instead of modern English field, it was felled. Instead of child, it was chilled. Instead of comb, it was camb. Instead of climb, you know, I, climb, I sound, it was climben. So, A sound was shorter. In the same way, blind was blind, not eind. And ground was grand, not ound, not long sound. This lengthening did not take place, however, if the consonant group in question was immediately followed by a third consonant. This accounts for the difference in wall between child and children. If you notice both of these, you would notice in child we produce a longer sound. Ild, child. L and D make the combination at the end that I talked about. Child. But when something else is added after that, for example, when it becomes children, it does not remain children, rather it is children. So from I of child, a shift to ill of children, ildren. The, wor the word wind, moving air, that is, probably has its short wall by analogy with words like windmill, where the third consonant prevented the lengthening from taking Place. So, you know, it's not wind mill, it is wind mill. In Middle English, wind normally had a long wall and as late as Shakespeare's time, it rhymed with kind. You know, now we pronounce it as wind. It used to be pronounced in Shakespearean times, till Shakespearean times as wind. So, you know, like we pronounce kind. So, when the famous poet Shakespeare writes, blow, blow thou winter wind. Actually, what he is doing is, blow, blow thou winter wind. Thou art 
not so unkind so you know he was rhyming this wind that we call now wind with unkind so this was the original rhyme this was not using an i rhyme what do i mean by i rhyme is a rhyme that you know in the writing form seems to be same but when you pronounce it it is different from that so it was a genuine rhyme that was used and this is one of the proofs of how walls were used during the middle english period 